do wire up for the individual blinkers also because um, I would have to run, tap the wires from the bumper, I'd run it all the way back up here and I already looked under there. It's not going to be easy to run that wire, to fish that wire through back up to here and then come down to the lights. And One of the first things we're going to do is probably going to remove the uh, sides or the small piece. But what I've learned is this is a one-time one use, but actually modified so that actually we use it. So I use a plier to yank this thing up. Now again, this is really tight in there because of these tabs. By trimming the edge here, here, I trim that side and I trim this side. So now it becomes removable. This one's obviously already modified. So put in and remove. Again, this side has, has also been trimmed also. Then you can pull this out. Yeah, it's a little bit stuck, but it's the way it's not in. There it is. That's what it's held on by, this pin and that pin. This is a T15 in here, which is pretty easy it looks like. It comes right off, just use a plastic trim tool, pull it out. This side, it makes it easier to see all the different um, latch point. You don't have to take it out, I do, that's in here. And you just grab and tug to remove. The upper trim, it's basically just pulling it out. This upper trim has the tabs here one here, one here in the middle, and one at the end. We have the plastic completely removed, and then um, the brake uh, I mean, the tail lights are here, these two, and these are actually activated with just 12 volts. They're just LED drivers inside. You'll need to access this connector here because this connector goes to that third tail light what I plan to tap we'll have to gate them with diodes so that um, when these do come on when you turn on your parking lights these don't reverse energize the rear tail light the third light the brake light okay I have an oscilloscope here that's going to measure and see if there's any digital signals coming in I did measure it I did not see it so I'm going to demonstrate it here we're on the brake light right now you can see the scope is a flat line at zero volts. Go ahead and step on the brakes. This will jump to 12 volts. This is basically, you know, five volts per division. You can see the voltage jumped up on the scope, but there is no digital data, not even 3.3 volts. I can decouple the DC and then bring it down. Okay, the DC has been decoupled. I'm going to set this to, you'll see the jump in the voltage but there's no actual, yeah, there's no actual signal. Okay, what I noticed is this is a little bit short, so what I did is I look at this is a brown, light brown, tan with yellow stripe, so I followed it down to here. I took this and brought it off. It just pulls right off, and I found, located the wire here, making it a lot easier to tap, so I'm gonna tap it from here. You can use one of these things to tap into it, but I prefer solder. Put some shrink tubing. Put shrink tubing in here. Solder this to this. That looks good. Let's shrink it a little bit. Just using the heat from the soldering iron, that's all. Plug this back in. Put the 
this back. Uh, you could use this, right? This type of tap. But I prefer soldering, so peel this back a little bit. I'm going to uh, install a diode too. I'm going to cut this. I knew that this one's positive, I already measured it. Diode, uh, it's a type of 1N401 rectifying diode. And what we're going to do is, so we're going to position the diode this way so that the electricity only flows this way and not back. We will continue that wire also to the other side. Peel this back a little more. Okay, we have the wire positioned correctly now. Let's put this around here. Okay. Now all four wires are together. Again, this one actually goes to the other light. The shrimp tubing over it. here. So we have one light with this now. We're going to run the wire over to the other. Here you can see there's the other light. It's going to solder right into here. One of these uh, tap wire taps. I don't like them. Just going to solder it in. Okay, now we're ready to test. At night when the parking lights or the uh, headlights are on, these tail lights are gonna be on also. So when you brake, they're not gonna get brighter. So at nighttime driving, if I step on the brakes, these lights are already on. They're not going to change. So they're just going to stay on. So it's not going to help at night. But the good thing is at night, these bumper lights are super bright. So they actually glare up. Back piece was a lot harder than I thought. So what I did, I found the trick is to put the plastic down and then close the trunk. Not completely closed, but close it so that it latches on the first latch and then start pushing it in. And then while pushing it in, also peek into the hole to make sure that all the uh, push pins are all seated correctly. Here's what it looks like now. It's nice and seated. The hardest one was that there's a yellow push pin in there that's really hard to align. But because of this opening, you can actually see it, which is good. And you can look through here to see the other one. Just use a flashlight. Push pins like right here. Just make sure they're seated right 